Hi, I'm Sue Stockdale and welcome to the Access to Inspiration podcast, a show where you can be inspired by people who may be unlike you. We hope that their unique experiences and insights cause you to reflect on your own perspectives about the world and to make you think. Well, we've got a fantastic final episode for this series and today's guest is Dalen Matthews, who is a Hollywood stunt woman. So maybe when you've been watching TV dramas, films or commercials and there's been a car chase or zombies or a fight scene, it's likely that you may already have seen Dalen but didn't realise it. Going to extremes is a unique flavour in her work and it sparked in her an intense craving for epic adventure because she's also an adventure photographer. There's going to be loads to speak to her about. Welcome to the podcast, Dylan. It's great to speak to you today. Thank you so much, Sue. How are you today? I'm great. I'm really interested in your career, Dylan, because there are two parts to it that I think are really probably a young person's dream. Stunt performer and adventure photographer. I mean, you couldn't really get better than that, could you? (laughs) Was that what you wanted to be when you were young? (laughs) No, and it's really hilarious, actually, because whenever I meet somebody and they find out that I'm a stunt woman, they always respond, I've always wanted to be a stunt person. And I'm like, am I the only one in the world that didn't want to be? (laughs) So when I look at my childhood, I feel like I must have been training for it because I was pretty much the tomboy doing all kinds of crazy things, you know, making my parents crazy. But I've always been in the entertainment business. I started as an actor and I worked behind the scenes for many years doing production managing. And then I had been married and I had a small child. I had a daughter and it was a bad marriage that I had to get out of. And I had to figure out a way to raise my child on my own. And I hadn't been working for a while because I was taking care of her. And so when I left, it was what I call life free assessment time where you kind of sit down and you say, okay. And for me, where that starts. And I feel like most of us have been in those crossroads in our lives. And I think for me, the first question I ask is, what is it that I love? And looking at my life, I love this crazy business, even though it is really kind of bonkers, (laughs) but it's where I feel most alive. (laughs) And I'm very athletic And I do have the right amount of crazy in me. So it just kind of unfolded that way. And I was working on a gymnastics gym with a bunch of up and coming stunt guys. And so that's where it started. It was like, huh, what is this business about? And maybe I could do this. And so it's kind of where I started. Before I went into like diving into trying to chase a job, a stunt job. I went and worked on a cattle ranch to learn how to ride horses. I did a driving course. I went back to doing gymnastics again. And so I kind of approached things in a very linear fashion. So it's like, if I'm going to show up, I want to make sure that I'm ready for the job that they're going to throw at me. So yeah, so it's been 22 years, 22 years I've been doing this crazy thing. <laughs> And I still love it. It might be helpful to give our listener an idea of the sort of shows that you appear in and the sort of stunts that you do. What were the ones that are most relevant that come to your mind? Well, because I had my young daughter and I had chosen to like be around to raise her instead of pay somebody to raise her. I was living in LA at the time. And so I ended up doing a lot of TV because a lot of the movies were across the pond, as they say, right? So they're in Europe and I would be gone for an extended period. And so I always say that I've doubled a ton of women that you do not know, but it's a long line of women. I'm a a tall blonde and I'm slender. And so I tend to look like a lot of those women. So I have a lot of TV in my experience. I've done some films, have also done commercials and music videos. So I kind of run the gamut. I have not had the good fortune of doubling one particular actress. We're only now seeing these action stars that are female. But for the longest time, you know, at the beginning of my career, there really weren't any action females. And still, it's 20 jobs for men to one of the women. So I could be the only woman in the stunt team. And because there's soldiers and policemen, and there's still very male dominated spots that are filled by men, it's a lot easier for men. There's a lot more opportunities. 
but we're seeing a change in that. So we have the Wonder Woman and the Captain Marvel and yay, (laughs) you know, Black (laughs) Widow. So we have some action stars that are females. So a lot of the stuff that I've done, you've seen me, but not really. (laughs) (laughs) That's the whole goal to being a stunt person is that the action is supposed to be seen, but the actor gets all the credit. (laughs) Yeah. I looked at your showreel on YouTube and I saw you getting crashed into and having fights and getting shot at and so on. So it is all action stuff. My nephew, I had sent out a, a postcard one time about a show that I was on and, and it was a fight scene between the two of us, two women. And I said, you know, who do you think will win? And my nephew said, well, seeing that you're the one that always dies, <laughs> my bet's on the other woman. <laughs> so yes. I have died a million lives. (laughs) Obviously, in those scenes, they have to look realistic. And I imagine there's a huge amount of preparation. And as I was just saying to you earlier, Dylan, we're recording this early morning UK time. So I got up even earlier to do a workout first so that my brain is awake and we can have a more productive conversation. I always think I like to be alert. That was my preparation for this conversation. What's the sort of preparation that you have to put in before doing a stunt? Well, it's funny because I did the same thing. I went for a bike ride, even though it's evening here. I went for a bike ride just so my brain would be on point today. (laughs) So yeah, I say that I'm a technical athlete and it's the same for, I approach things and I don't know, I have kind of a morbid sensibility because of the career that I have. So when I approach a stunt, I basically break it down and I break it down in all the ways it can go wrong. So if I'm jumping off some balcony or something onto the concrete, it's like, okay, I could fall and split my head open. I could break a leg. I could get hung up on the railing. There's something inside me. I don't know if it's like a little bit of crazy, a little bit of the risk taker in me that once I've overanalyzed everything, there's a switch that goes off. And so as soon as they call action, I just huck myself over the balcony. (laughs) Whatever happens, happens. People ask me often, or they'll make a reference. They'll say that, oh, you're in shape because you're a stunt woman. It's like, no, I'm in shape for many different reasons. It's not because of my career. I definitely prep and I'm athletic and I keep myself strong because at this point in my career, The people that call me for jobs, the stunt coordinators that call me for jobs, they know what my skill set is. And they'll just say, Hey, are you available next week? And I show up to set, and a lot of times I don't even know what they have in store for me. It's a great compliment because they believe in me and they believe that I can do whatever situation they're going to throw me in. (laughs) And there's sometimes it's like, Wait, what? (laughs) Okay, (laughs) I signed up for this. So um, it's a good ride, whatever it is. It's usually a good ride. I'm just imagining there the sort of the job advert. You can think about (laughs) a a recruiter is advertising for somebody with good telephone voice or good organizational skills. Is it about here? We need somebody who's going to get shot at or drive in a car chase. What what are the sort of ways or how does a, a stunt performer activity get advertised? Yeah. So let me back up a little bit. So the stunt coordinator is the one who hires us and it is definitely an industry that can be very nepotistic. It really, who you know, that gets you the job. And so it's your job as a stunt performer to go make yourself known. And in this day and age of accessibility on our phones to make some sort of little video or demo reel for some. It's a little easier than when I started where we used to like have covert operations where we like sneak onto sets just so we can meet these people and prove to them that we were capable of whatever they were looking for. We used to have hardbound books that would be produced with headshots with their attached and stuff like that. So similar to an actor, but it's really about kind of establishing a reputation and, and along with that reputation, you have to show up and do the job and do it well. That's how you end up getting another job and another job and another job. It's really about having good etiquette on set, being somebody fun to hang out with because there's lots of downtime in between setups. So if you can tell a good story, (laughs) keep everybody laughing (laughs) and do your job. It makes you more hireable for sure. So in terms of those experiences that you've had, Dalen, 
Have any of them not gone as planned? Or what are some of those moments that are highlights in your mind of things you'd probably rather forget? Oh, well, fortunately for me, I have not had any like real serious injuries. You know, that certainly happens. There's a, a gal in the UK. He's an extraordinary woman. Her name is Olivia Jackson. She continues to be talented, but she was in a horrific accident on um, Resident Evil, doubling Mila Jovovich, and she ended up having her arm amputated, and she's had so many injuries that have been, it was terrible. So that certainly happens, but we do whatever we can. The whole goal in being a stunt performer is a safety first. So you can do it take after take after take. And sometimes it's not just, in Olivia's case, it was a camera car. And so it's not always the stunt performer that makes a mistake, but there's a lot of moving parts on a set. And you just hope that everybody's doing their job properly and everything's been discussed So everybody is on the same page. So there aren't any mistakes that cost somebody their life or their well-being. I guess the one one that comes to mind was I was doing a television show and I was working with a live performer by the name of Chris Angel. He's an illusionist. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He was the mind bender. I think that mind freak, I think is his name. So he was TV show and he was playing... My son, I was playing his foster mother and he tracked me down and was torturing me. And he had put me hanging by my ankles in the Houdini water tank. So I was literally hung by my ankles. (laughs) I had a straight jacket on, a real straight jacket. I had chains around my neck that were connected to my ankles and I had duct tape over my mouth. So we had some special things to make sure that I stayed safe. But there, the chains that were on me were plastic. And every time I'd go into the tank, they would float. So, of course, that doesn't look real. So we're going to get out the real chains and actually use a real padlock. And Chris came up to me and he starts wrapping me in these chains. And he looks at me and he goes, don't worry. I've gotten out of this before. And I'm like, you're a magician. Okay. <laughs> I'm a stunt woman. <laughs> I'm like, What? No. And all I could do is look straight across the set at my safety guy. And I was like, you better have me because this could end very badly. And yeah, it was a pretty hardcore stunt that I, like my daughter was young at the time. And I kind of told her goodbye before I left for work that day. Cause you just never know. I know it sounds very morbid, but just never know, just never know. So and it's about trusting your team and making sure that you're well informed. And like I said, the whole goal is to be able to do it again and again. And oh my goodness, did I do it again and again and again all day long on that one. But it made for some really good viewing on the TV screen for sure. I do want to brag about one that was one of my favorites because it was one of those moments in my life where I was like, pinch me, I can't believe this is my life. I was doing a music video. I was driving a 68 vintage Mustang and I was doubling Kristen Stewart and I was driving in what we call the LA river and it's an aqueduct basically, but it's iconic in movies where they've had the fast and furious and Greece and all these car chases down there. And I got to get in this beautiful bright blue car and spin it all over the LA river. And I had a camera car chasing me. And I literally was like, is this my life? Is this really my life? But it was for a Rolling Stones video. Oh, So how fabulous. I know. (laughs) (laughs) So I've had a few moments like that where it's like, it's pretty awesome. I'm actually getting paid for this. The other side of that is working as a zombie on The Walking Dead and, you know, two hours of prosthetics and laying in some murky water face down, crawling on my stomach, you know, under a subway train. And there you go, "Ah, my glamorous life. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, it sounds like you've got a lot of wonderful memories there, Dalen. Does that inspire your daughter, having her experiencing that job that you have, does that inspire her to be a stunt performer? No, thankfully she's in the corporate world (laughs) and she's really happy. Yeah, actually it was interesting how, you know, I'm kind of a tough cookie 
and single moms, this little girl. And whenever she would cry, I'd be like, really? Are you bleeding? What's going on? You know, I always, honestly, I thought the children were fearless. And then I had a child that wasn't, that was a little more timid. And it was a really great lesson for me, but she really came into her own. And I think like in high school, all her friends thought I was the bomb, but she was like, Ugh, you know, it's my mom, really? And I had like an old, old police car and I'd load up all her friends and we'd go screeching around the corners. You know, and she'd be, I'd look over at her and she's rolling her eyes at me. You know? <laughs> and her friends were in the backseat squealing. <laughs> it's like, come on, don't you think I'm cool? So she ran off to university. And then the best part of it is that it's not just her growing up, but kind of being out from underneath my shadow. And I know that I'm a very strong personality and I think it was tough for her to kind of find her own. And now she is just a radiating light and she's such a remarkable human. And she had a tough time not having her dad around. And she is, she's one of my favorite humans now and she's grown up and successful and I'm so proud of her. And so somewhere in there, that toughness came through. It just came out in a different package and it's awesome. Oh, wonderful. I'm sure that you're a great inspiration to her. And speaking of inspiration, given that is the title of our podcast, I'm wondering who or what inspires you, Daylin? So a simple answer to that is people who are kind. I, in my travels and just this remarkable career that I have, the one that we're speaking of, the stunt career, I meet a lot of people that are high profile, that are somewhat worshipped by the general public. And they're just regular people to me. There's been very few people where I've like been really wowed by them, where it's like, wow, this is, I can't believe I'm meeting this person. And I've met some really incredible people, but it's the people that are kind that really make a difference. The people that Clint Eastwood, he's a remarkable director, but he's also a remarkable human. And he treats his crew with such respect and kindness and to me, that's where I get, you know, my inspiration as far as my Hollywood career. As an adventure photographer, I have a mentor who's a remarkable photographer. But again, inspire just almost feels like it's not enough of a word. You know, he, he is such a motivating force in my life. And he is a family man. He's not only a crazy adventurer, he pushes himself way beyond limits, but he always has time to mentor me or answer the silliest of questions. And that has such an impact on me. The people that take the time, I think it's something that we, the way that humanity has been shaped by <laughs> technology devices, we're, you know, becoming so disconnected that we've forgotten how to be kind to one another. And so when I find that, I don't know, it's just, it's something that makes my heart swell. Mm, it is a, a magical quality that we all have and can offer to other people as well. And it's a nice segue then into your other career that you have as an adventure photographer. What does that involve? Well, again, it was kind of the impetus for chasing this other career. First of all, you can only fall down for so long. <laughs> Although I'm determined to, you know, if Betty White was still around, I'd be doubling her, you know, in my later years. I don't want to give up on my stunts, but I definitely, it's smart in a freelance career to always have more than one iron in the fire. And I have been passionate about photography for my whole life. I was a little concerned about if I ever made it into a profession where I had to ask people to pay me that I may lose my passion for it. But What's really remarkable as I build this new business is that my passion is just getting stronger and stronger, which is super exciting for me. Um, the world of photography is, again, another male-dominated career. <laughs> Way to go, Daylin. <laughs> it's 80%, 80 of professional photographers are men. So the 20% that's out there are mostly the women are shooting portraits and weddings. So the adventure photography, you know, realm for women is, is pretty untapped, you know, again, kind of that life reassessment time, like 
what do I love to do? You know, what more can I do with my life? My daughter has grown the next chapter of my life, if you will. I love traveling and I love seeing the world and I love meeting people and hearing their stories. In the last couple of years, as I've started to develop and hone my mission for this business, I've come to narrow it down to going after outdoor gear brands, the likes of a Patagonia or, you know, Arteryx type of brands that go to the extremes because that's where I thrive. (laughs) So, so like, Hey, can you hire me to go to the Himalayas and shoot your product? (laughs) And given that there are similarities between both activities, having an element of extreme within them, what are some of the other qualities or characteristics that it brings out of you? Do you think in terms of the photography and the stunt performing. One thing that I, springs to my mind immediately is attention to detail. I'm wondering if there are other things as well. Yeah, one of the things as a stunt performer, as a stunt double, I have to study, I have to watch my actor, and I have to replicate what it is that they do. It's fascinating how like careers can meld together. And so you're right. So I've been studying humans like since I started as an actor because human behavior between humans And then now I'm studying what the humans are doing so I can replicate it, then put a lens between my eyeball and the rest of the world. And it's bringing it down to, like you said, that very fine detail. And as far as like adventuring, I think that my stunt brain has, I don't know how to say this. So the way I approach things, I guess the fear kind of gets put on the back burner and I just look at the task at hand. So if I have to sail to the Antarctic on a Zodiac. It's like, okay, how do I keep myself warm, comfort, safety? Like, am I tied into the boat so I don't fall out? So it's funny how all that just crosses over. It's been quite the blessing. And I think it gives me a bit of an advantage to some people that aren't used to doing that. I can get that sense. And as I was listening to you there, Dylan, I was thinking about what's going on within you when you're doing both of those activities. You've told us about the preparation. You've told us about the observation of what you're noticing in order to replicate. I'm wondering, what are you aware of within yourself? Is it your heart rate or how you're feeling, your senses? Well, fear is there. (laughs) Fear is there. (laughs) I I remember meeting someone who I admired quite a a bit in my career, who she's an incredible driver. She's one of the the most accomplished drivers as a female in our industry. And I remember asking her something about a similar question, like right before they say action, she's like, oh, I am shaking in my boots. Are you kidding me? I'm scared. I'm like, wait, you get scared after all these years of doing this? You actually get scared? So yeah, that's the part of me where I say that I I feel most alive because it is that adrenaline junkie in me that it is that heightened awareness. I have a stunt coordinator. (laughs) He puts me in this like crazy spot. And then it's right before they're about to yell action. He walks up to me and just goes, don't screw it up. And then walks away and you're like, wait, what? And it's, it's kind of funny because it almost takes you out of that moment of being too prepared, right? So it's like, okay, I'm present now. Holy crap, what's going on? Like I said, too, there is a switch that goes off in me because I think that there's a lot of the preparation, but definitely the unknown of what's going to happen or being in a situation where you just go, this doesn't look like it's going to go well. You know, oh God what's going to happen. And you're saying prayers and all that stuff. But as far as like working as a photographer, I think that fear is almost a little different because it's, it, well, maybe not it's performing. I guess I have to perform for a client. So I have to deliver a product and it's almost the same as being on set and performing and making sure you give them, you know, there's nothing better than having the whole crew clap after you've been beaten to a pulp or something, you're like, oh, good, they liked it. Maybe I don't have to do it again. (laughs) So, So it's in the same sense. I love being in the mountains. I love being in the snow. Somebody told me I have the life source of a, you know, 20 year old. So I get giddy 
when I am chasing my passions, I am giddy. You can tell that I have, I'm a pretty high energy person <laughs> and I do like to laugh. Um, I try to keep that energy up when I'm on set as a stunt performer, but as a photographer as well. If I'm the one in charge, I'm the one that has to rally the troops and keep that energy up. So it's a different kind of pressure though. It's interesting. I was watching a video of Do It Jones, who's a photographer as well. And he was doing spread for National Geographic and he'd been sent somewhere and he described pressure he was feeling about not getting the shot. And then just listening to his intuition and looking up at a particular moment and taking this photograph through the trees above him, which is the most sold postcard, I think, that National Geographic have ever have. And what struck me about his experience was that using his intuition and just trusting, listening to himself. I was wondering whether you had a similar feeling. Yeah, I think for me, I can't speak for everybody else, but for me, it is doing that foundational work and then flipping the switch and just trusting that you know what you're doing. My photography is still in the infancy stage as far as I'm concerned. I'm still working and I'm still learning. But I push myself outside my comfort zone a lot because I feel like that's the best way to learn. And I fail. And that's how you learn too. I'm not afraid of failing or learning. So I'm always seeking out more wisdom. I have the curiosity of a three-year-old. So I always am asking questions. I'm always trying to figure something out. I'm always wanting more. And I think that helps as well. I think as far as the adventure photographer, why it appeals to me doing that kind of photography is that it is, it's always so stimulating. It's always a different environment. If you're dealing with extreme elements, you're going to have a different experience every time because weather is unpredictable. And I love that. I love, I love, obviously I love a good challenge. That's pretty clear. (laughs) Well, you're speaking to somebody here who also loves the unknown from my own adventure experience. So I am absolutely with you when you're talking about that unknown and unpredictability that's certainly very motivating. If our listener was thinking about how they might step out their comfort zone, how they might take a few more risks, what would your advice to them be? Oh my goodness. I was living in Georgia for a while and I had a young gentleman that worked at the post box and he told me he's never seen a mountain. And I was like, what do you mean you never? And he's like, I've never been on a mountain. So every time, like I would go away for a couple of days or whatever, I come back with pictures and I go, look, Tony, I found this mountain. It's only two hours away. You just get in your car and drive up there, go experience it. So just go outside our backyard, which we get pretty used to looking at. We don't always realize how extraordinary it can be if we start exploring. So sometimes it's just a car ride away. And some people aren't able to do certain things because financially they may not be able to, or physically they may not be able to, but you don't really have to look that far to just take a chance, you know, start small, just go for a walk. And then the next day, go for a little farther and go a little farther. And then one day just drive down the road and turn down a road and see what's down there. That's how it starts. I'm so grateful for my Instagram followers, you know, because they say the most beautiful things to me, how I've inspired them or they're living vicariously. And to me, it's like, that's awesome that I can give you little pieces of the world that may make you salivate and encourage you to go see it. So that's a huge goal in my photography is to the world, to other people, show them things that they may not be able to go see, but also just that inspiration. I was told once that I have a superpower in that people love to tell me their stories. It's actually quite funny because it happens all the time that I can just stop at a petrol station or something and the guy next to me, he starts telling me. He went on this adventure and he met a mountain goat. And it's like, I'm just filling my car right now with gas, but I love it. So whatever that superpower is, if I come in contact with somebody and they want to tell me their story, I can't wait to hear it. And those are the things that I find inspiration in. I think we all have incredible stories. I love that have given people a platform to share those stories. I think that's remarkable. So thank you. 
Well, we're so happy that you've come onto the podcast to share your stories with us today, Dylan. I get that sense of energy. I get that sense of love of nature that you've expressed in how you've described the outdoors and what you've been doing. So I'm sure this conversation is going to be inspiring for some of our listeners. And if they do want to follow up with you and tell you their stories, how might they do that on the internet or social media? Well, I have my website for my photography is daylinmatthews.com. So that's very easy. I have a stunt website. It's troubleonwheels.com. <laughs> so if you want to look at some of that stuff, <laughs> Instagram is daylin.matthews and Facebook is Daylin Matthews Studio. So it's fairly easy to find me. Well, that's brilliant. Thank you so much for your time today. It was well worth me getting up early and doing that bike ride so that I could be energized for this conversation. I've loved it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This was so much fun. Go enjoy your day. I'm going to go go to sleep now. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It's been a delight. Well, that was a fantastic conversation. I really enjoyed it. And remember, you can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts and any other platforms that you listen to us on. And you can connect with us on social media, on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Just search for Access to Inspiration. We'll be back again in a few weeks' time with another series of inspiring guests. And I hope we can connect again together then. <laughs>